Hello, my name is Claire Bolton and I'm the gallery manager at the Aurora Cultural Center. On behalf of the staff and board of directors, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Art Bites, our online series that gives you an insider look into the creative process, featuring artists from our virtual exhibition, Beyond the Walls. Beyond the Walls continues until September 26, so please visit auroraculturalcenter.ca and navigate to the gallery page. Today's special guests are woodworker Ross Colby and his son, Daniel Colby. Ross Colby has been creating beautiful handcrafted pine furniture for over 45 years. His son, Daniel, is an award-winning visual artist living and working in Montreal. Daniel is well known for his stunning portraits. I'm delighted to have both of them here today in conversation. And before we begin, I invite you to watch Ross's video as he walks us through his creative process. There we have a large block of lumber glued together to make the le table legs. They become two and a half inches square, four of course for each table. There we have them laid out after they've been ripped on the saw. From here we're moving to the lathe where they become table legs more looking like something that's round instead of square. You may be able to see that at the very end of it, the section is left square. I don't turn it all the way down because that's where the legs have to be or the skirt has to be attached. This part, we're making just a little many grooves into it, give it a little more flair. Wood turning is always fun. I always enjoy that part of the job. The first one is the easy one. The next three and four are difficult because they got to look like the first one. So here we are sanding some of the little intricate grooves, making everything as smooth as possible. Now we've moved to what's called the mortising machine. This is cutting a square hole, the full length of the square part on the leg to attach the uh, skirts to, or whatever you call the rails, either one. This has to be done on two sides of it so we can uh, glue them in. Here I'm cutting the mortise, which fits into the cutting, I'm cutting the tenon rather. Notice how nice and good tight fit this is. You'll see me pushing it in. It's a super tight fit along with a bit of glue. Once that's in there, that's not going anywhere. So now we're doing um, what is we're drilling the skirt so they can be fastened to the underside of the tabletop. And I think from here, we're maybe gonna move to the sanding machine. If I remember, there we go. That's called a stroke sander. It's uh, the belt's 212 inches by six. Here we are rolling the edge, and now I'm going to run a bit of sandpaper in that little groove. The groove is just for design, helps it look a little more pleasing. Here we go, the top's going through the thickness planer. You'll see a little pause there, sometimes they stick a little bit, and you have to grab it on the other end and give it a tug. You can see I had to pull that one, it doesn't happen too often, but it did there. And from here, we're going to be moving on to jointing the edge on the jointer. That's what you see here now. Make it nice and smooth and straight. You have to do that on both sides. I'll only show one. Now I'm sanding the edges, make them a little bit smoother and more rounded, particularly working on the corners there to make it look like it's been hand worn for many, many years. Here's the antiquing part of it, painting the table legs. The base is going to be a whitish color. At this point, I'm going to start rubbing it down with some sandpaper, taking some of the paint off so it looks like it's been around for 50, 60, 70, 100 years. This is also a very enjoyable part of the job, making it look uh, like it's not so brand new anymore. And then the next little application is rubbing it down with a stain. In this case, it's Provencher, it's a Puritan pine, just to make it look a little more old and mellow which the years would give it but we have to make this look like a, an antique much quicker than the years will allow us so i'm just wiping off some of the excess so it doesn't look terribly terribly yellow just a sort of a creamy white here i am just pressing the top of the table that's going to be uh, put together shortly smashing the little uh, chains on it to give it some bruising here's a rich rich uh, red cherry stain if you look closely, some of the, the little dimples there show up. 
now we've reversed it. As you can see, the base is all put together. I'm going to situate it on there, standard it all up. This is where the pocket screws come in, fastening the top and the base together. Uh, we've got a dozen or more all the way around. And uh, there's the complete table, all made in less than four minutes. Thanks very much. Thank you, work. Ross. That was really interesting. Do you have a favorite wood that you work with? Pine is my favorite. I've worked with lots of them. I've worked with oak and walnut, cherry. Uh, pine is a warm wood. I've often mentioned that in some of my articles I've written. Oak is cold. I, it, just, it just never did anything for me. And do you mind telling the audience how you would cover up a mistake that you might make? Okay. Um, the one little trick that maybe some people know that and others might not, if you get a dent in a piece of wood by accident and you don't want that there as compared to what you saw me on the table making the dents, a hot iron and a cloth moistened with water, damp with water, put the cloth over top of the dent, apply the heat from the tip of the iron onto the wet cloth that will push the water into the wood and raise that dent. You will be amazed with, you know, over several times, over with damp, damp cloth, how much of a dent you can raise. It's, it's really quite amazing. Oh, thank you. I'm sure a lot of the woodworkers out there will be happy about that tip. Daniel, I've noticed the light in both your landscapes and in your portraits. And this is a, a question I've always been curious about. How do artists actually paint light? Like, is it premeditated or is it, is, it, is it intuitive? For me, it's that light and shadows that really bring it to life and make anything mundane, interesting and beautiful. But when it comes to painting it, I think from a technical point, it's, it's about the colors you choose. It's about mm -hmm. thinking about there are reflected colors that are coming off of other surfaces, that it, whether they be a cool, color hitting or a combination of cool colors making up one thing or a warm color that's bouncing off of a wall onto somebody or onto another structure and i think that it's just a kind of a partly a matter of paying attention to those subtle those kind of nuanced colors rather than saying oh you know skin is this beigey pink color well, if, this, if the light is hitting in a certain way, it may have a green in it. And I, that's also why, something that I, why I love painting people is because all the different skin tones have so many different colors in them, depending on how you're looking at it. And uh, specifically, I guess, when it comes to bright sunlight in my paintings, it's a matter of um, adding the right amount of yellow, I guess, to your white to get that kind of sunshiny glow. How do you inspire each other? Well, I'll let Daniel finish, but I will start. The only job that I really remember that, that, that he got some, I don't know, some inspiration, I suppose, from something I was doing. I was building what was called a Welch dresser. It's a tall unit in one piece, uh, four doors. It was about half done, and he happened to come in one day, and I'll let him take over from there. Yeah, I, I think it was a summer. I was, uh, I was uh, home for the summer, probably in, during my last year of school, I think, at NASCAD. And I, I was setting up a few nights in the workshop when my dad was done for the, for the day, sort of painting, uh, well, not plein air, because <laughs> inside, on site, I guess, whatever you want to call that, from life, sort of finding interesting compositions in the workshop of... Uh, the stacks of wood or the the long um, oh, like the tools the sort of clamps the so some big clamps and the in particular the piece of furniture that my dad just mentioned the dresser that was about I would think two-thirds done the the doors weren't on it so it was sort of an interesting structure I thought and in the environment of the shop with the tools on the wall in the background and I I did a painting, a big painting of that. So sort of, I think that was probably 
the closest time that uh, that we worked together on a on a piece of art. <laughs> One thing I noticed about your portraits is the personalities come through so strongly. What's the reaction when people receive a portrait that you've done of them? Uh, I've had some some good strong reactions, which is is very touching. It's very meaningful to to do something that's personal for people. I've I had. Um, one client, she had commissioned me to paint her father, who was a, an older gentleman, and she she teared up when she saw it in a, in a good I mean in a good way in a, in that you know you can't help but feel good when you can give that to somebody, and you know that it's going to be a piece that is really meaningful to them. That that particular piece was was really fun because uh, it was an older man and he had a lot of sort of wrinkles, texture into his skin, lines around his eyes and a short white beard. And I found that very fun to paint. All the little, the little beard bristles was a, was a fun part. What have you learned from your father, Daniel, in the, in the art world? I think more than anything to do with his woodworking, I think what, what I've learned or been inspired by, sort of impacted by, is that he was spending his life making a living doing what he loved and what he had a natural gift for and was interested in on his own and just making a go of that. and. I think having him do that and having my mom also run her own business uh, connected to the shop um, made me feel that I could do, I could pursue art or my, whatever, that whatever was my interest, which was art, painting mostly, as my living. Oh, thank you. And Ross, what have you learned from your son? <laughs> Oh boy, I don't really know. I mean, <laughs> I'm certainly impressed with his talent. There's no question about that. It's uh, his talent is far beyond my talent as a woodworker. Um, not inspirational so much as, but I remember when Daniel was going to nursery school. This this is just aside from what the question is, but it was kind of comical. When uh, and my wife went in one day uh, as maybe to pick him up, and the nursery school teacher said. Oh, I'm sorry to hear your husband has been out of work for so long. And Alice says, well, that's not so. Well, Daniel said he hasn't, he doesn't work. He lives at home <laughs> because the shop is right next door. I never worked. I just was there. <laughs> you were just, playing all day long with right. wood. And, and it's oh, not thank exactly you for that. For the question, but it is comical. Yeah, I think, I think having two parents who were self-employed, and and sort of on a less conventional path made it made it feel natural to pursue my own. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, you've given us an inside look into the creative process. Thank you. You're Stay welcome. safe. Thanks Bye for now. Us.